If you're into PC gaming, I'm certain you've heard the terms CPU and or GPU bottlenecking. And obviously you are into PC gaming and have heard of it, otherwise you wouldn't be here watching this video now, would you? Uh, you're here because you're not sure that you fully understand what this whole bottlenecking thing is, but want to learn what it is exactly, why it happens, how to tell if you're experiencing it, and what you can do about it. Well, that is what I'm going to be covering in this video, so let's get to it! First of all, what is a bottleneck? It's the portion of a bottle, right here. But seriously though, what does that have to do with CPUs and GPUs, you may be asking? It's because of what the neck of a bottle does. When you're pouring a liquid out of a bottle, this narrow neck is restricting the flow of that liquid, causing it to flow out more slowly than it could otherwise. For example, if I were to fill this bottle and this cup with equal amounts of water and then flip them both upside down, which one will be able to empty its contents more quickly? Because there's nothing restricting the water from flowing out of it, the cup is able to pour out all of its water very rapidly, whereas the water in the bottle struggles to drain because the neck of the bottle severely limits the amount of water that can go out and air that can come in to then push more water out. Now let's switch over to our gaming PC. Instead of water, of course, what we want is as many frames per second flowing from our graphics card as possible. We don't want to have anything restricting our graphics card from it being able to do its job to its absolute fullest potential. The thing is, your graphics card can't run a game on its own. It's called a graphics card for that very reason, because its job is to handle all of the graphics processing. But in order to do its job, it needs to be given instructions of what to draw. That is where your CPU comes in. When you're playing a game, like a first-person shooter, you're pressing keys on your keyboard to move your character around the game world, and moving your mouse to look in different directions. One of the jobs of your CPU is to take your input data and then tell the GPU the player wants to move in this direction and look in this other direction, which the GPU then draws up and sends to your monitor. Also, if you press a button to throw a grenade or fire a gun, these commands must be processed by the CPU and then sent to the GPU to render an image showing the action that you input. But this isn't all your CPU is responsible for. There are also sound effects associated with the things you do, as well as other ambient sounds that also need to be processed and sent to your audio processor. As you well know, when you move, there's a footstep sound effect that is played. And depending on what kind of surface your character is walking on, a different sound effect will be played. When you're walking on concrete, a footstep sounds much different than when walking through grass, for example. When you fire your weapon, there are sound effects associated with that. Depending on where you are on a level, there are different sound effects that need to also be played, like the sound of vehicles driving by, or a waterfall, Basically, or birds chirping, situation or whatever. Totally there are a lot of different sound effects that all need to be processed and played at particular times, and it's your CPU's job to process all of this information and pass it along so it can then be played on your speakers or headphones at the appropriate time. Then there are non-player controlled characters or the in-game AI. Every game has enemies or other characters in the game that are all doing different things and often reacting to your actions. All of this is also being processed by your CPU. It sees what you're doing, then it has to determine if the AI characters need to do anything in response, and if so, then determine what the response should be. This data is then sent to your graphics card for it to process and render to your monitor. Same thing goes with online multiplayer games. The actions of other players is processed by your CPU and sent to the GPU to then be rendered on your monitor. Even with all that, we're still not done yet. There's the game physics. 
and many other things your CPU is also responsible for, but I think you get the idea. Your CPU has a lot of work it needs to do very quickly in order for your game to run smoothly. So the faster your CPU does all its work and sends that data to the GPU, the faster your GPU can do its job, resulting in more frames being drawn per second. Ideally, you want your CPU to feed draw commands to your GPU as fast as your GPU can draw new frames, meaning you want that flow of information to be as unrestricted as possible. You want to have your GPU utilization at 100%. Uh, this means that your GPU is working as fast as it can and outputting the maximum number of frames it's capable of. Unfortunately, this doesn't always happen. If your CPU isn't powerful enough to process everything it needs to and send that data to the GPU on time or right when your GPU is ready for it, then your GPU ends up sitting idle for fractions of a second at a time waiting for the next draw command to come in. This means your GPU will draw fewer frames per second, even though it's capable of drawing more. This is called a CPU bottleneck because your CPU is restricting or slowing down your GPU's performance. Uh, for example, in this footage from Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I'm running a GTX 1660 with an AMD A105800K, which is a pretty old and pretty underpowered CPU by today's standards. Um, but as you can see here, my CPU utilization is at 100%, but my GPU utilization is between 50% and 70%. Uh, in this example, the A10 is maxed out. It's working as fast as it can, but is unable to send draw commands to the 1660 fast enough to get any more performance out of the GTX 1660. Uh, this results in our frame rate being in the 30s and 40s. When I switch CPUs and pair the GTX 1660 with a Ryzen 7 2700X on the other hand, uh, keeping the game at the same graphical settings, mind you, we see the GPU utilization pretty well max out and the CPU utilization stay much lower, giving us a consistent 60 plus frames per second. This is why professional graphics card reviewers always pair whatever graphics card they're reviewing with the fastest, most powerful CPUs on the market. They want to find the maximum performance a graphics card is capable of, and using the fastest CPUs available eliminates the chance of a CPU bottleneck and pushes the graphics card to its fullest potential. I think it goes without saying, but when it comes to gaming and getting your money's worth out of your hardware, you want to avoid having a CPU bottleneck as much as possible. When you're spending two, three, four hundred dollars or more on a graphics card, I feel pretty confident saying you want to get every dollar of performance out of that GPU you can. It just doesn't make sense to me to spend that kind of money on a graphics card and then run it with a CPU that severely limits its performance. You might as well have saved yourself some money and bought a graphics card that performs at that lower level that your CPU can support. When you're shopping for a graphics card, I recommend finding something that is going to complement your system. You of course want to get the best graphics card you can afford, but at the same time you don't want to buy more GPU than your system can utilize. I mean, you wouldn't put an 800 horsepower engine into some beat up old farm truck, would you? I don't know, maybe someone would, but without all the other performance parts to go with it, like suspension, wheels, tires, exhaust, and everything else that goes along with it, it's kind of a waste of money because you're not going to get the performance out of that engine when everything else is holding it back. Anyway, when it comes to choosing a graphics card, uh, you're going to have to do some research and figure out what GPU fits your budget and also best complements your CPU uh, as well as the rest of your system. Okay, so I think I've about beaten the CPU bottleneck thing to death. So what about a GPU bottleneck? Uh, what is that exactly? Well, unlike a CPU bottleneck, a GPU bottleneck isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, in fact, when it comes to gaming, it's what you want to have. A GPU bottleneck occurs when your GPU is running at 100% utilization, but your CPU is not. 
just like in this game footage, my GPU is running at 100%, but my CPU is far from that. In this scenario, my CPU is sending draw commands to the GPU as fast as the GPU can draw new frames and still has power to spare. This is good because it means my GPU isn't being slowed down and I'm getting my money's worth out of my graphics card. It also means I can upgrade to an even more powerful graphics card in the future and most likely my CPU isn't going to bottleneck that GPU at all. Now that you know what a CPU and GPU bottleneck is and why they happen, I'm sure you want to know how can you find out if your CPU is bottlenecking your GPU or not. My favorite tools to use, which is what I'm using in this video, is MSI Afterburner and RevaTuner. They're completely free to download and use, and I recently made a video about how to use them, so I'm not going to go into detail about them in this video, but have placed a link in the cards, uh, which is popping up right now, and in the video description so you can learn where to download them and how to use them. In the MSI Afterburner settings, under the Monitoring tab, you want to make sure you enable both GPU and CPU usage, as well as tick the Show in On-Screen Display checkbox here so you can see what your utilization percentages are. If your GPU utilization is at 100% or in the high 90s, uh, then you are good to go. On the other hand, if your CPU is at 100% and your GPU is significantly below 100%, then you know you've got a CPU bottleneck going on. If you are experiencing a CPU bottleneck, uh, unfortunately there's not really anything you can do to fix it outside of upgrading to a more powerful CPU. Phenomenal cosmic power! If you want a higher frame rate than what you're getting, you can of course turn the settings in your game down, but this won't alleviate the bottleneck unfortunately. Even though you're getting more frames per second, your GPU will still be performing below its full capability, meaning you're still not getting your money's worth out of it. If you're lucky enough to have a more powerful CPU that can slot into your motherboard, then your upgrade path is relatively easy. Oftentimes, though, upgrading your CPU entails buying a new motherboard to go along with it and possibly new memory as well, which can get expensive quite quickly. On the flip side, if you're experiencing a GPU bottleneck, then you have nothing to worry about. And the good news is, a year or two down the road, you can most likely upgrade to an even more powerful graphics card if you want, without even needing to upgrade your CPU. Well, I think it's about time I shut up and got out of here. I want to know if this video was helpful to you though, so please leave a comment and let me know if you learned something you didn't know before, or found the information in this video helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please do all the usual YouTube stuff, uh, click the thumbs up button, share it with your friends, and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing more videos from me. If you really enjoy what I do here and want to help support me in making more videos like this, then please uh, check out my Amazon store at the link in the video description where you will find many of the products I feature in my videos, including the Ryzen 7 2700X and the GTX 1660. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today and letting me share some information with you. I hope that you have a great day and I look forward to seeing you again in another video. Later.